Hi everybody and thank you for watching. I'm going to do something a little bit different and special today. It's going to be a new feature on my channel, a new playlist called For Old Time Sakes Unboxings. And this is going to consist of old games consoles, old games, statues and also figures that I've accumulated over time. So pretty much in a nutshell, it's going to be like belated, incredibly belated unboxings. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be something different and I, I, I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, to start off with my first video for this playlist, I am going to be covering the Sega Dreamcast. My most beloved console of all time, my favourite console of all time. Absolutely adore this system. I had a lot of fun with it and it's just an incredible machine. It was released, I think, in October 1999 in the UK and the model that you see in front of me is the original one that I purchased. I've had it all this time, really looked after it. It's in mint condition and I absolutely cherish this system to bits. Now to the left of that, you can see a small selection of games. Um, there's only a few, but the actual games that I have got are just nothing but works of art. Each and every single one of them on its own is an outstanding game. I know people have got their own opinions and stuff. Other people might not like some of the games in there. But personally, myself, I think every single one of them is a work of art. If we start with the top left, we've got Metropolis Street Racer. Um, in its day, it was just fantastic. It introduced the Kudos system. It introduced accurately modelled cities of San Francisco, Tokyo and London. It introduced, I think, um, the time system as well. Say, like, if you played the game at 12 o'clock in the UK and you were racing in the streets of London, the times in San Francisco and also Tokyo would also be accurate to them cities too. So, depending on what time of the day you're racing at affected the times um, and the day and the night cycle of the other cities around the world too. On top of that, the selection of cars with the Kudos system included in it made for an absolutely incredible game. I mean, the slogan for the game was, it's not about how fast you drive, it's about how you drive fast, was so apt for Metropolis Street Racer. Incredible, incredible game, lost countless out countless hours playing it and it's just it's just brilliant even to this day it's still fantastic and then we move on to Soul Calibur for me again one of my most favorite fighting games ever I know they also did the Soul Calibur for I think it was the original Xbox and also the GameCube 2 but I think the finest version without question was definitely on the, on the Dreamcast the arenas the characters the weapons that were involved with the characters and also the frame rate of the game, it was just incredibly smooth. It was fluid and it was it was it was great. Within this game as well, they also did like a, a challenge system where you I think there's something like a hundred challenges what you had to kind of like progress through as like a, a side option within the game, as well as you know, instead of playing arcade, you could go do this challenge system. And it, it started from easy to hard. And again, if you wanted something a little bit different, the challenge system in that game was great as well. It was a it was an absolute blast to play. And then we move on to F355 Challenge. For me, again, I think one of the one of my favourite racing games ever made, just because it was so hard. To get good at this game, you needed to put in countless hours of practice. And the thing about this game as well is, if you did win a race, you actually won it on merit because you put in all the hard work and the effort and the practice and everything about it. But what I liked about this game as well is every single car, they were all Ferraris, but every single car within the game was exactly the same as the next. They were all the same, there was no difference. There was no difference in engine, size, the weight of the cars, whether it had friggin' turbos on it or whatever. So it wasn't a question of accumulating credits and using that to upgrade your car, so it gave you a bit of an edge on your opponents. I mean, to me that, yeah, I know it's a standard for racing games now, but that's kind of like all nonsense. When you get a game like F355, and all the cars are the same, you're gonna win on merit because you put in the hard work and the practice and everything so great game a lot of fun to this day it still looks graphically graphically fantastic and i love it to this now when we move down to the very bottom row we've got nba and nba 2k back in the day i i did love my basketball games i played some really really good ones i don't really play them anymore but 
from what I can recall, NBA 2K was an incredibly smooth, fantastic basketball game. And I'm sure it still is. I mean, I, I can recall playing many, many hours with this and it was just a, a top, top basketball game. I would probably go as to say one of the finest basketball games ever made. It was just great. And then we've got virtual tennis, same with virtual tennis. Great arcade tennis game. Uh, really no more need to be said about that. And then we go into ready to rumble boxing, an arcade boxing game. The characters in it were funny. The graphics were fantastic. The fluidity and smoothness of the game was great. Brilliant game to play, especially with two players. It was absolutely fantastic. Again, if you've got a Dreamcast and you've not got it in your collection, I would highly recommend it. Um, I never got ready to rumble two. And I think that was supposed to be better, but I never played it, so I can't really comment. Now, moving on to the middle road. This is perhaps my favourite game of all time. I mean, this game actually it nearly crippled Sega because it cost that much to make. Um, great RPG. From many, many years ago, back, back in 1999, or, or perhaps if not before, I heard that this game was supposed to be like a, a five game collection. So it was, supposed to, it was supposed to consist, the whole adventure was supposed to consist over five separate games, Shenmue 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, back at E3 in 2015, which was last year, it was announced that Yu Suzuki is going to complete the adventure with Shenmue 3. So everything that he wanted to do is going to condense it in the third game. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But um, if you've got a Dreamcast and you've never played Shenmue, I would highly recommend picking it up. Even if you're never going to play it, I would just go and buy it now. So anyway, that's enough rambling on about the games. I'm going to do a, a quick unboxing for the Dreamcast, get this bad boy out, and we'll take a look at it. So if you just bear, me, me, bear with me one second, and I'll get this sorted out. So that's the games cleared out of the way. Let's open up this bad boy. Take a look at it. So put this down there. Open up this, this. And slide this thing out. So you had a, a drinky disc. Let's just bring that into shot. It's uh, basically an internet browser disc because at the time you could actually connect to the internet and play play games with this system. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you look at it now, about then it was 56K dial-up, so it would have been, uh, I suppose you probably wouldn't have noticed back then, but compared to today, that's just, it's just a non-starter now. But anyway, that's your internet browser disk. So we also had the, the booklet for that too. Again, as you can see, it's, it's all in fantastic condition. And also we had, so if we have a look at this, called Dream, I try and keep the reflections off, Dream On Volume 1, Playable, Monaco J GP Racing Simulation 2, Toy Commander, Ready to Rumble, Incoming, and Trick Style. Uh, movies, Virtual Fighter 3 TV, Red Dog, Snow Service, Power Stone, UEFA Striker, Tokyo Highway Challenge, Sega Rally 2, and also Sonic Adventure. So, looks like there's some demos on that. So again, as you can see, still in fantastic condition. So really, really look after my stuff. And then we've got some documentation there. So pretty boring stuff. Power cable. And we've also got, let's have a look, I'll bring this into shot so you can see. This is the cable, bring it to shot there, what you use to connect the console to the telephone line for your 56k download dialogue. So again, what's that? And now we've got some more cables in here. So we've got the, I always get confused with these. I think these are the composite cables. And also that's the lead that plugs into the back of the Dreamcast to connect to your TV. So we'll put that to one side. And also, one final thing. If it 
wants to play. I'm sure it does. This is the actual. This is the actual Dreamcast controller. I've actually got a couple of VMUs in this as well. This is like a portable memory card. And you can actually use these for changing tactics within games. Say if you're playing with one of your mates, you're playing a football game with one of your mates, instead of pausing the game and changing your tactics within the game, you could actually do it through one of these awesome VMUs. These, these are great. You have an LCD display on screen, and it just gave a little added dimension to, to your gameplay. So these are absolutely fantastic. It was a great idea back in the day. So just slide that back in there. So that's the Dreamcast. A, B, X, Y buttons, D-pad, analog stick, start button, and also, towards the back, you had your trigger buttons as well. Now, one of the things about this control pad that kind of like annoyed me is how the actual wire was there. I, and I, don't, I, I just know back in the day that really annoyed me, and they actually gave it like a little a little bit there where you could tuck the wire into and it kind of like got in the way a little bit but um, back in the day though it was a, it was a fantastic controller and uh, I'm pretty sure it still is so anyway that's everything within the box so we'll just wrap this up so now what we're going to do is get rid of all the packaging take the Dreamcast out set it up and we'll get it up and running on my on my monitor so again, if you hold fire, uh, I'll be back in two ticks. So that's all the packaging put to one side and out of the way. So I've got the console set up, as you can see in front of me, to connect it up to my monitor. I'm actually using a composite to HDMI converter, so hopefully it will give us the best picture quality possible. So I'm going to hook this up to my monitor now. So I'm going to take the HDMI cable out of my PC which is leading to a monitor and hook it up to this connector here. So that's that. And let's turn on this bad boy and see what we get. So there we go. And that just brings back so many memories. So here we go, here's the interface for this console. Bear in mind it's um, coming up 17 years old this coming end of the year. So you've got your play, your file, your music, and your settings. Not as in-depth as the consoles of today, but this is, like I say, it's going back 17 years. So you've got your play, which is chuck in a disc, and play it there if it's not set to auto. You've got your file, which you can go into your VMUs and copy or delete or move files with it, uh, of the game data within the actual VMUs themselves. Music, pop in an audio disc, and you can play music, and also settings, which is gonna be incredibly basic. Language, date, time, sound, and other. There's your auto start on, so when you pop in a game disc, it starts automatically, and you can also adjust the memory card clock. So, let's come out of that, and we will give this a whirl, and we will give it a whirl with Soul Calibur. So let's take out this disc, pop it in the system, and see what we get. And away we go. So there's a data successfully loaded. We're going to go for the 50 hertz option on this, just in case the converter um, plays a little bit funny. They sometimes have a tendency to do that. And also my VMU as well, like I, was, I, was, I showed earlier. We'll just show this here. Here's your little VMU screen. I'll zoom in on that with Soul Color on it. Really, really clever idea. I absolutely love the, love the VMU, but uh, yeah, we'll get rid of that. We'll focus back on there. So we're going to 50 hertz. And we'll just watch this.
Apologies for the quality of light as well, but this is going to get rectified within the not too distant future. <laughs> wow that just brings back so many great memories so anyway that's pretty much it for my dreamcast belated unboxing for my new playlist let's come out of that so you can hear what i'm saying if you enjoyed this and you think it's something you're going to be interested in please subscribe i will be doing more videos in the not distant not too distant future so keep a lookout for them also as well, if you are more interested in the Dreamcast stuff, I am actually going to um, upload the intros to all the games that I showed earlier. So if that's, again, something you're looking forward to or, or might be something you're interested in, again, please subscribe and then you'll be able to get that content as soon as, it up, as, soon as it's uploaded. So I'm going to wrap it up there. So until next time, if you, like I say, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe and I will hopefully catch you again very, very soon. So until next time, take care and thanks for watching. Thank you.